So I don't know if you guys noticed, but yeah, I'm not in New York City anymore. Now I'm in my hometown, Madison, Wisconsin. This, this is a very small place where I started out running on the street and talking to girls. This is my home grounds, my stumping grounds, where I put in the grind work for me to become a coach and me to learn how to seduce women in the way I do. And I want you guys to tune in to the thing I'm going to talk about today, which is letting go of nice guy behaviors. Letting go of nice guy behaviors are very important to your growth as a man and becoming an attractive man. I think that the times when guys are acting out nice guy behaviors, they're not really being honestly themselves. They're not really being themselves in any kind of light. They really believe that what they're doing is for a good deed. And if I told those guys that everything that they're doing is, has a bad intention behind it, they wouldn't believe me. They'd be like, you know what? I do have a good intent. My good intent is that if I act out this way, then women will respond like this. If I give out this compliment, then they will respond like this. I mean, I'm doing a good thing. But I would challenge them and I would say, okay, if it's really a good intent, then why do you want something from everything you do? Why do you always want something from every action you take, from every action that you take towards being successful, successful women, with everything that you want to give away, why do you always want something back in return? And as I asked him that question, he would probably get reactive. He would be like, hmm, I'm not wanting anything in return. I would go, you are. You're wanting something, whether that be appreciation, whether it be the girl uh, liking you, whether that be you, the girl having sex with you. You want something back for you haven't been a nice, too nice, as I say, guy. So this whole video is about teaching you guys about my journey and letting go of night guy, nice guy behaviors and how you can learn how to let your nice guy behaviors go, your two nice guy behaviors go, so you can start to be the attractive man that you always wanted to be. Because it's inside of you, you're already attractive, it's just that you have shit on top of that that's stopping you from being that. And I had shit on top of mine as well. The shit I had on top of mine, I'll just tell you some of my uh, nice guy behaviors that were completely harsh. They were completely harsh nice guy behaviors. <clears throat> One of them, people pleasing. I used to be an incredible people pleaser so much that I would always be looking at the micro expressions of others. And I got really good at reading people. I got so good at reading people that I would be in front of people and when they would give me anything that's like not slightly off from being okay, I would try to rush to do something about it. And the rush to do something about it was me saying something, me trying to uh, over compliment, me doing all these things to try and just people please others so that I would feel that I'm being accepted. And that's what it was. It was like, can I constantly do these people pleasing things to give me the chance to get the acceptance from others? Because me growing up in the church, that was always a thing of being able to do things and uh, never stepping on other toes and being accepted by all people. And this is, why I want, this is one of the reasons why religion fucks you up because, well, Christianity for me, is because it taught me so many different things that weren't valuable to my life. They were not valuable at all. Going out there and trying to make everybody like me wasn't valuable to me. And it, it brought me a lot of stress. Constantly being in front of people and wanting to please them in, in ways that would uh, help them, help their ego, that didn't make me feel good. I would say things, give out compliments that I didn't want to give out. I would rush to do things so people would know that, you know, I'm a good person. I got good intentions behind what I do. And I kept that up for a long time. And it was one of the things that I had to let go. And when I let, when I let go people pleasing, the people who used to constantly want me to do that to them, I noticed that they left my life. And it was like, I, we had the role together. The role was, I please them more than they are used to, more than they should get. And they just allow themselves to accept it and they demand it of me every time they come around. And I want to get too in detail to every single one, but people pleasing was a thing I used to do and I used to hate it, man. I used to really, on the inside, hate when I used to be in front of somebody and be saying something that I don't want to say. I would be people pleasing them in a way that I don't want to. I'll be in front of someone giving them information just so they could like me. Like, really? I used to be like, why am I doing this? And it never made me feel good. And I know you know what it means. I know you know what it feels like if you're a guy who constantly are people pleasing. I mean, like, you overextend to make others feel good. And I'm constantly doing that, constantly doing that. And as I'm overextending, I notice that this is not the thing that I want to do. 
it's not and I knew that all along I just said I had to get to a point I hit a threshold of this is not the way that I want to live and I let that go and I'll tell you what happened later when I let all, when I let all my nice guy behaviors go and then another thing that I was really really guilty for was trying to make people uh, like me that's what it was and it was, a, it was still a manifestation of the people pleasing thing it was just always doing things to make people like me and I always wanted people to just approve of my way of being approve of my way of thinking approve of my way of expressing and every single time I wanted them to approve of every single part of me which is trying to seek approval that's another thing you can call for wanting people to like you is I'm trying to seek their approval to be able to feel good about myself to be able to know that okay what I'm doing is right what I'm doing is for the good deed of others what I'm doing is that I'm doing these things and I'm uh, going to be able to get more women to like me that was good man and that was good. that was peachy king and guess what on the inside how did I feel as many of you guys know yes I started young having sex very very young very young um, I'll come out with a documentary talking about it but even along me starting having a sex at a young age I still didn't feel strong on the inside that still didn't change I didn't feel like I had the uh, strength to be able to withstand situations where I could just be in myself and not try to get the approval of others and I think everybody goes through this because people are always telling you when you grow up don't do this be like this don't rock the boat uh, don't overstep your boundaries you know oh no no don't say that you know being honest like this you should not say that you should only be this honest you should only be like this you should only be like this and what they didn't even understand is that they were giving us not the right way of living but what was beneficial for what they thought was beneficial for them and all these beneficial ways that we've been taught into we thought was beneficial ways we start to notice that for the life that I want to live these no these ways that I've been living out are no longer beneficial for me and that was something I had to come to with trying to seek approval is that this is not a beneficial thing that I want to have as a part of me if I want to go out there and live the life that's true to me. Because anytime anybody is living out truth in this world, they will get resistance. They will get people not liking them. So that means I had to let go of what? Everybody wanting to like me. I had to let go of the approval of others for what I do is a good thing. What I say is a good thing, especially with women. I had to let go of this idea that everything that I do has a good intent behind it. Everything that I do, I had to let go of them wanting to perceive, wanting me wanting them to perceive me in that light of everything that I'm doing means that I'm a good man, means that I'm a good person. And I remember crying about this. Like, was it last year? I think it was last year of just still living out the part of me that was like, I'm in front of women and I still want them to perceive me as a good man. I still want them to perceive me that I have good intentions behind what I do. And I had to just strip that part of me. I was like, if I know that I want to really get women to me who really value me without me trying to seek the validation in them to know that I'm a good man and women who actually can just see that, then I need to not try to look for that in, um, in women. I should, I'm not going to try to seek that part of them for them to say that. I'm not going to try to seek that part of them for them to act out things to show me that I am somebody that has a good deed for what I do. And it meant a lot to me. It really meant a lot to me to just completely let that go. That just seeking approval of others, that's the part of me that I had to let go. And as I was letting that go, I'm noticing that, okay, this is the thing that I know that it was important for me to let go, for me to get to where I want to go. And the fact that I let it go, it was, it was, it was amazing for me, uh, to say the least. And of course, the other thing that I want to bring you guys to is something I used to really struggle with was being a white knight. And that's saving women from pain this is a nice guy behavior which is trying to save women from the bad assholes out there or the bad guys of the world I used to do this with my dad I mean my mom I used to do this with my mom because I used to try to save her from the pain of my dad I used to do this with women when I was younger I used to try to save my sister from the bad guys of the world I used to try to save all the women that I was growing up with from the bad guys out there because I'm like uh, -uh you don't want to talk to them you want to talk to me because I'm the one that can treat your heart right. Because all I was doing was living out the thing with my mom. Trying to save my mom from her pain she had with my dad. And I was leaving that, living that out with every single woman. So I want you guys out there who are living that out with every single girl that you must. You absolutely must save her from her pain. 
I want you to start to think about, okay, where, where in my life does it show up that I'm trying to constantly save women from pain? Because it's playing out when you walk up to the women that you talk to on the street. Because you're trying to play this nice guy thing, and you th the too nice guy thing that you think women love. You think women want. They don't want you to be too nice. They never want that. So where are you playing out in your life trying to save women from pain? Or where, ha where have you played it out in your life and you're still unconsciously playing it out? You want to look at, okay, did I try to save my mom from pain? Was I the guy who always wanted to be different from the jocks in school? Was, it, I, was I the guy who, always, who never wanted to be like the guys in school who show pseudo-masculinity? The being loud and shit like that. You're like, I don't want to be that. I want to be the nice guy who treats women like this, who treats women like this, who shows them love, who shows them care, who shows them this. You want to see and start to really go within yourself and go, where am I living out these, these patterns and within myself of trying to save women from the moment of feeling anything besides pleasancy? Where am I trying to do that? And that will, you will be able to, once you hit that point, you will be able to sit with it. And as you sit with the pain of that, sit with the, your own fear of a woman feeling anything else besides pleasancy, you need to sit with that. And as you sit with that, it starts to uproot. And I had to do that with all of these things. I had just had to sit with it. I remember reading a book by Iron John, uh, by Robert, Robert Bly, called Iron John. And as I'm reading the book, it talks about, you know, wanting to save women from pain. And I noticed that I, I was saving every woman from pain. This was when I was 22. I noticed that I was saving every woman from pain. And in the act of that, I got women who brought me baggage. That's what you get. When you're trying to always save women from pain, you will get women who only bring you baggage, who only bring you emotional stress. <laughs> That's what you'll get. And you'll find yourself overextending trying to help them. And as you overextend your energy, you'll find yourself resenting them. So I let all these go. And what I notice is that as I start to let these go at points, the main thing that was the overarching thing was the reason why I let all these go was just my commitment to growth as a man. I was like, once I commit to growth as a man, and I knew this in that moment, I knew that I was committing to letting things go that I was afraid of letting go. And I was afraid of letting it go. I was afraid of letting go the people please a part of me because what? It made me feel good because I know people saw me in a good light. I was afraid of letting go of the part of myself that wanted everybody to like me because guess what? I was the guy where everybody was like, oh, he's a good dude. He's a great dude. And I didn't want to lose that. I didn't want to lose everybody saying that about me. I, wanna, I didn't want to lose the fact that women would, would see me as a, as a, a prov uh, not a provider, as a comforter. And, as, and them seeing me as a comforter, it made me feel so good. It made me feel so good that I was seen as something that almost most men out there could never be seen as, which is just, he's so comforting to me. I could just tell him whatever I want. He can, he can take care of all my problems for me. And I was that guy, I was like, I sure can. <laughs> and it was ridiculous. It was ridiculous playing that out. So what are three things that I would say you can let go right now to start to become more attractive as a man? The first thing I would say that you need to let go is the good opinion of others. The good opinion of others will control you if you allow it to. Always wanting the good opinion of others will put you in the light of, I am like this and they see me like this because I'm like this and they see me like this, I better not do anything because I don't want to lose the way that they see me. You don't want to lose the perception of what others have on you. That's what you don't want to lose. Because you don't think you're going to lose yourself. You think you're going to lose their good perception of you. And their good perception means so much, doesn't it? It means so much until you know, until you learn that, yeah, it actually means nothing. Because if I could just, am I always, if I'm always operating from, what is their good perception of me? Are they perceiving me good right now? Is this person perceiving me good right here? Is this woman perceiving me good right here? Every single time you go through that, am I getting perceived in a good light? That, uh, that basically what you're saying is, Good, they're controlling me. Great. Okay, great, they can control me. Okay, good. That person can control me as well. And you're throwing your control in so many different directions instead of within yourself. That's what you're doing. You're allowing them to control you. That's what's happening. You are giving away your power. Your power is being lost in the moment that you want them to perceive you in a good light. It's something that they're giving you that you're not giving yourself. That's what's happening. It's a fear inside of you that when they look upon that fear, 
you're going, oh my God, I better do whatever I can so they, they can't see that fear, which is, I, I'm actually scared of what you think about me, so I want you to perceive me in a good light. And what it is is that you're afraid of coming to terms within yourself, that you're afraid of actually what you might think about yourself. And if they, think, if they see what you think about yourself, then you, you're exposed. That's what you're afraid of. You're afraid of being exposed about what you believe about yourself. And that's hard, isn't it? It's hard to take that to heart. But you have to understand that letting go of the good opinion of others is basically saying, I, I no longer allow you to dictate where my life is gonna go. I no longer allow you to control every action that I take. I no longer allow you to be the reason for me doing this thing right now. Because with or without you, I'm gonna be still here. Because if that person vanished in a moment, you would still be there in this moment. If they weren't there, you'll still be here in this moment. So what it is is that you must get used to what is it about yourself that you choose to put as importance over what they're putting importance on. Because when somebody shines a light onto you, when you see the eyes, when it's kind of like these beaming lights onto you, when you see these eyes looking at you, the main thing that you're afraid of is that the eyes that are looking at you, it will see the part of you that you're afraid of exposing. But what would happen if you exposed that part? What would happen if you owned that part of yourself? What would happen? That fear would completely dissipate in a moment. Because one, what, like I was telling the student on, the last, on my last one-on-one -on -one workshop uh, last weekend, I was like, the thing you're afraid of, man, you need to face it. And not just face it internally, but physically face it. Because as you're talking to a woman, if you're afraid of what people think, if you're afraid of the good opinion of others, if you're afraid of, okay, if I don't do this right, they're not gonna have a good opinion about me, I want you to go and talk to a woman and I want you to do this. As you're talking to her and you see somebody looking at you, I want you to just look at the person and just look at them like this for a moment. Feel what it feels like to have that fear face. You need to face the fear head on. That's the way you're gonna be able to notice that it's an illusion. Face it head on, I mean physically face it. Put your eyes on the thing you're afraid of. Because once you put your eyes on it, you'll notice that it dissipates in the moment. Or maybe you feel something, but you notice that that actually is not as real as I was making it out to be. The anticipation of what they could think about me is more scary than actually looking and taking it in. You need to be able to receive what they're giving you to know that yes, that's just an illusion. That's just my projection onto them. Maybe they're looking at you and they're looking at your pants or something. They're like, oh, it's cool pants. Oh, maybe he's just selling her something. You never know, but until you face it head on, I mean, physically put your eyes on the person and look at them looking at you. Look at them for a moment. And what you'll notice is they'll probably get under pressure too. They'll be like, oh my God, this is okay. Oh, he's looking at me, he found me. And they'll go into the same thing that you're, you're going into. Not saying that you flip it back on them like, hey, you don't look at me like that. I'll put it back on you. No, that's not the way you do it. But you need to face the thing you're afraid of head on. And you're going to find out something different happening, man. You're going to find out you're going to be in front of people and you'll know that, yes, the eyes are on me, but I can still stay in this moment. Because like I said in my other video of not caring what people think, it's just about controlling your focus. You put more importance on this moment than what they think about you. That's the way you're able to let go of the good opinion of others. Which is also stop caring what people think, as, pe as people in the community say. You're letting go of the good opinion of others by, by just learning how to, con by facing the head on and then learning how to control your focus in a moment. Which means I'm putting more importance on what I'm doing here with this woman than what this person could perceive me as. I'm putting more focus on where am I going with what I'm doing right now than this. And you have to consciously do it until you learn how to just stay here. Because your, your attention is going to want to stay here and then as the person look at you, divert, 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 divert. And I know what you know what it's like is when you're standing here and you're talking to the girl and then you notice that this person is looking at you and this person is looking at you or somebody's zoning in on you from whatever they are, you have a tendency for your attention to go there, come back here. Go there, come back to the girl. Go there, come back to the girl. So the thing is, is that if you notice that it's going there and coming back, focus on the person for a moment. Look them right in the eyes and I'll accept what they're giving you and then come back to the woman. And yeah, she may, she may be like, okay, what's happening behind there? You just do that, but you're doing it for you. Because this journey is a you journey. It is, it's you going out there and being able to shed away the things that are stopping you from getting the things you want in your life. AKA the women you want in your life. 
Another thing that I want you to let go. Please let this go. Let go of always wanting the atmosphere around you to be at equilibrium. This is a new one. This might be a new one you, you've, you've heard. But something I noticed that nice guys do, and this is something that I used to do as well because I had nice guy behaviors inside of me, is they always want the, they always want the atmosphere to be at equilibrium. They never want anything around them to be rocked, be rocky. Anytime that there's anything around them that's rocky, they, start, they rush to try to go uh, make it better. And I remember that every time that a situation used to always get hectic or always to get fiery, I used to always try to do things to try to bring it back to equilibrium. My brother used to, used to, used to go out of whack and I used to try to do things to bring it back to equilibrium. Situations should try to get out of control in front of me and I was trying to bring it back to equilibrium. A girl would blow up on me and I was trying to bring it back to equilibrium because I'm like, no, no, no. I'm the guy that, that saves you from pain. I'm not that kind of guy. No, 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 no. Calm down. Just let's... And I used to have that mentality. The mentality was, oh shit, shit is going astray. I need to bring it back to the moment. I need to bring it back to safety and peace and love and, you know, and joy. And in the act of being, of trying to always bring everything back to this moment, to, ah, okay guys, calm down. Always doing that, it stressed me the fuck out. It did. I used to be in class and as soon as I, as soon as I used to notice something going a little bit astray, like with two guys going to fight anything, I would say things and I would do things trying to make, not make that happen or I would be in front of a woman Man, let's bring it back to women. I'll be in front of women, and anytime I notice a woman give me anything besides pleasancy, I would get really, really shooken by it. Like, no, 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 I'm not a creep. No, 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 I'm not like that. No, 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 no. And that mentality of no, 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 that trying to just save the moment every single time. Oh man, that, that's that hurts me so much. It really just, I'm like, I don't always want to. Sometimes it's not my fault. Sometimes these people, they just this happened and I just got to deal with and sit within this moment what's happening sometimes yes my mom is mad at me and I just got to sit with it and not try to always bring it back to this equilibrium sometimes my friend is mad at me I'm not going to always try to save him from being mad for me mad at me because I wasn't wrong in the situation or I used, to, I used to always overextend to try to make sure everything was at an equilibrium the atmosphere and let's say this everything from when I'm out um, at night and I'm, and I'm eating with somebody and I notice a, a situation or argument starting to brew and I say things to try to cut the argument or I used to, in, I used to insert things to try to make everybody laugh and I'm always trying to settle the tension in the air. So if you notice yourself all the time trying to settle the atmosphere around you because you want everybody to be at ease, you want everybody to be cool, I want you to let go of your need to try to save everything around you. Let go of your need to try to save the atmosphere around you by trying to make, make sure everything is at an equilibrium even within yourself. Stop always trying to save yourself from feeling things. That's another, that is a manifestation of it. You are afraid of feeling things that are not pleasant. That is the reason why you're always trying to save everything around you from being unpleasant. Because you're afraid of, you're afraid of the unpleasancy within yourself, so you're always trying to save the unpleasancy around you. You're always trying to be at an equilibrium within yourself too. Start to scan inside of yourself. Like I said about emotional range. Start to go within yourself and go, yeah, right now I don't feel pleasancy, but I'm okay with that. I want to feel life for what all life is, not just the pleasancy that comes with it. And if, the, if there's a third thing I want you guys to let go, let go and let go and let go, that is let go of wanting to use manipulation as a strategy to get what you want. Let go of wanting to use others to get what you want. This is what it is. It's letting go of wanting to have people be a certain way that you try to control them to be so they can give you what you, what you want. And let's think about it in terms of women. You run up to a woman and you do her approach. You say hello. And as you say hello, she, she gives you a weird reaction. And in that weird reaction, you go, oh, I'm sorry, I know, I didn't, I'm sorry, I didn't, mean to, I didn't mean to offend you. Or I didn't mean to do something. And you constantly go into apologeticness. That apologeticness, a lot of times, is because you don't want them to perceive you as a bad person. That is actually manipulation. You wanting, you wanting them to calm down by, oh, your overextended apologeticness so they can see you in a good light. Let that go. It's okay if you're just saying, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to uh, scare you or I didn't mean to shock you. Just that, that enough empathy is that's okay. 
Now let's go with giving a compliment. You give her a compliment and you go, excuse me, you look amazing or you look like this. And then she goes, thank you. And then nothing else. She gives you nothing else back. And you feel like, hmm, okay, I gave her a compliment and she's not giving me anything, she not, she's not giving me anything else back, why not? Why is she not opening up right away and giving me all the information about her? You know why? Because from, or behind that compliment, you wanted her to give you something. Whether that be appreciation, whether you be her opening up and showing who, who she is. Because you have this idea that if I go out and I give a compliment and I'm doing this thing, that's a good deed, then I'll get this thing in return. That's what you wanted. And she didn't give it to you. No, she didn't. Deal with it. She didn't give it to you. She didn't. When you give the compliment, you have to understand that you must be genuinely interested in the girl. You must be operating from genuine interest so you can roll <laughs> into getting to know her. So she can spark curiosity in herself about coming back to you. And what's the, I would say, in going into conversation? You start to give up all this information about you, or you start to ask these questions that mean nothing really, just so you can get something back in return. You want her to start to open up to you. You want her to start to give all these things back to you by you just giving out, giving out good information, asking her the good questions, you know, being able to you know, ask her this question and this personal question. You want her to be able to go, oh, that's so nice. You know what, here you go, here you go. And her just opening up in all these ways. Stop wanting something in return for everything that you do means that if you ask a question, ask it for the pure joy of asking the question and not trying to get something back in return for it. Because manipulation is a, is a strong strategy that, that nice guys use, to be, guys who are too nice, use to, be, uh, to try to get the things they want. Maybe they want investment from a girl, so they start to do all these overextended behaviors like bringing her flowers or you know, paying for all the dinners or you know, never you know, asking for anything from her and always doing everything overextending that is a total nice fucking guy thing to do is to overextend yourself and I can't say I'm perfect I can't I've done these in many ways in my life too but as I let go of these behaviors that stop that was stopping me from being an attractive man it completely it completely uh, made a difference it completely made a difference to everything that was happening in my life because I no longer had this idea that if I do all these things and I overextend then I'll get what I want in return because yeah, even when, even if I did get some, even when I even if I did get what I wanted in return, yeah. it would never be as good as I want because there was always some attached to it. And that's how you feel as well. I'm doing all these things, and even when I do get it, why is it not good enough? It's not good enough because you're not doing it for the pure act of itself. You're doing it so you can get something in return. And there's a difference between those two. Doing something for the pure act, it results in joy. Doing something for for the return of something results in unsatisfaction. And as you start to just let these three things go, the other ones start to intertwine into this. And as, they, as you can see them intertwine, you start to notice that, okay, as these are all intertwined, I can start to let these other things go because this thing that I'm doing is attached to this thing as well. It's attached to me seeking approval. It's attached to me trying to overextend even in my facial expressions. And nice guys, finish last but they can always finish first if they choose to being too nice because I don't like to say nice guys just because being nice is okay but being too nice is always bad as far as your attractiveness as a man uh, you guys you have to forgive me now it's fucking cold I'm in Madison Wisconsin one of the coldest places I've ever <laughs> I've ever been on earth and I'm like shaking almost but I'm allowing myself to stay present in this moment to you uh, this is Tony Solo for The Natural Lifestyles, and I want you to subscribe below to Essence of Solo. I'll be in my hometown for a while, so I'll be doing pickup here, I'll be doing everything here. Just to show you guys that no matter where I am in the world, you matter. Until next time, your cold boy is out. <laughs> oh, my fucking feet.